Okay, here we're going to look at populations in general. Uh, but on the title slide here, we have the world population percentages. And you can see that China has the largest percentage here uh, based on 2017 statistics at 18.5% of the world's population. India is not far behind at 17.9%. Then the United States at 4.3%, Indonesia 3.5%, and continuing down from there. And smaller ones uh, here, the others uh, that are not listed, just kind of lumped into this category, represent almost 30% of the world's population. So population summary slide. So this is just included here as kind of a way to review at the end to make sure you've touched all of these points and you understand population size, population density, population dispersion, and population growth. This uh, video lecture will address many of these. There's also a couple other video lectures that help tie these in to allow you to make worthwhile connections. So population range. Well, in general, it's a geographic area uh, within which that species can be found with localized dispersion densities. So we're going to use the example here of fire ants. And they were accidentally introduced to the United States in the 1930s. And they were actually stowed on ship ball ballasts that were landed in the port of Mobile, Alabama here. So I put the star right here where Mobile, Alabama is located. You might be familiar with where this is located, sadly, during hurricane season. This is a very common area there. Uh, currently infest about 250 million acres in the United States, this, these fire ants. It's because they're adapting to drier conditions in western areas and infesting this greater regional area. So their population range is increasing. Uh, contributing to the spread of fire ants is uh, mating flights within the wind. There's also flooding regions pushing them in different areas. They're hitchhiking, hitchhiking on vehicles. Agricultural commodities and horticultural commodities are helping shift them, sadly, throughout large regions of the world. These are areas in red where it's certain. Green represents very possible uh, conditions. And then uh, the blue regions are less um, likely, but still possible areas. We could see that they definitely like the warmer environments, but they are expanding. Another organism, sadly, that's expanding is zebra mussels. Uh, the native distribution of these species is in the Black Sea, in uh, Caspian Sea, uh, in Eurasia. And zebra mussels have become invasive species in North America, Great Britain, Ireland, Italy, Spain, and Sweden, so over a very large area. This is what they look like on a close-up, but sadly one's not too bad, but we can see that they very rarely will just find one. They can really colonize an area. As a result, they can disrupt ecosystems by basically causing like a monotypic, a single species here, colonization. They can damage harbors, waterways, ships, boats, water treatment, and power plants. See here how they just kind of encrust uh, this kind of buoy that was sitting in the water. Zebra mussels, uh, water uh, treatment plants, are most impacted because water intakes bring in microscopic free-swimming larvae directly into the facilities. Zebra mussels can clog pipes and um, because of their massive growth rate, it just kind of most multiply so densely that water can't pass through. This image here shows a shopping cart that was left in zebra mussel infected waters for a few months. And the mussels have colonized every available surface on the cart. Here they are colonizing other shells. You can just see how they simply just take over. In addition to that, zebra mussel range, they're still spreading at an alarming rate. So we see here 1988 and expanding from there. This is sponsored by the USGS. We see how they take over river systems, how they're expanding in more densely areas here. So far, the west coast is pretty free. Uh, down the Mississippi River here. And slowly expanding further and further west. And then sadly, uh, while they're really dense here, they do start to pop up on the west coast even in points in between. And they are still spreading at an alarming rate, so an area of concern here. So much of a concern, a uh, local problem here in Connecticut there will be areas where they indicate high-risk lakes and water systems, medium-risk and low-risk areas. And there's a list of uh, areas where they're currently known to be. As a result, they'll hang signs up to help educate voters and people in general uh, so they're not transporting these. Uh, they can be transported in uh, water that's taken from an area, they can be transported in live wells of boats, uh, bunks of trailers. So this is all things that people need to be mindful uh, that they're disposing all foreign matter far away from the water.
population expansions, a uh, pyramiding of numbers of a biological population, population growth in more and less developed countries based in 2002 information. Less developed countries are um, having a much larger population expansion than more developed countries. So we're looking at, this is kind of what's already been done. We're looking at predictions going into the future and we see this trend continuing based on the population pyramid. Population contraction, it's a reduction over time of, of a region's population. The decline can be caused by several factors, including um, basically under par fertility, along with limited immigration, heavy emigration that's exiting a country, there could be a disease that comes in, famine, or war. In the case of the COD, we see that there was in the 60s, kind of mid 60s, 70s, an explosion in the population, but then sadly in 1992, the population completely crashed. Uh, this is true in east coast of Newfoundland. Uh, it's also occurring, sadly, in other areas. Uh, Cape Cod in Massachusetts has sometimes been called Cape No Cod uh, because of the missing of the cod population there. And that's a result of population contraction. And the region's population is on the decline, which can be for a number of reasons.